Okay, so today we are going to explore the movement of electrons um, when atoms absorb energy. But before we do that, we have only briefly talked about the atom and what it looks like. So before we get started on our lab itself, take a moment at the very top of your paper and draw what you think an atom looks like and label its main parts. Just an atom and its main parts. Take just a second there. We'll do a think pair share, so don't share yet. Just do your own thoughts and you can pair up and we'll see what we came up with. What's an atom look like? What are its parts? Dumb right now. <laughs> We've talked about it a lot, haven't we? We just haven't talked about it recently. I know you don't have any pain. Are you hiding your knees? It's all right. I'm not going to judge for long. So, the last time you guys learned about the atom, I was what, about 6th grade, 7th? No, you talked about it in, in freshman year, didn't you? Freshman year? Not a lot, yeah. I think a lot of times when we learn about these things, we're still thinking about unicorns and puppies. We're not really learning. Okay, now pair up. See if the person next to you uh, or your partners around you were able to come up with anything different or more. Let's pair up. Make any changes you'd like to make to yours, and then we'll share. Pair up. Phone a friend. See what they came up with. Exactly accurate. All right. So that I don't, um, I don't want to embarrass anybody. But would anybody like to share what you drew? Come up here if you want to share real quick. Let's see if you want. To, come on, Kimmy. You're not shy, are you? Can you come share. Kirsten, you guys want to draw? Oh, I guess I can. All right. We'll do Kirsten's and Kimmy's, and then we'll see as a class what we came up with. protons and the neutrons inside and then our orbitals around it and then our electrons are on here and then I also said that the outside electron was the valence electron. Okay, okay. all right so she said we have valence on the outside and then the orbitals and then the orbitals I can't write you write a lot nicer I should have let you write it and then you said these were protons. And you said neutrons mm -hmm. were in here. Do you think the neutrons are negative, or were you just putting a line for uh, them? Yeah. Okay. So let's just put like a zero since you think they're. Negative. All right. 
Is yours the same thing? All right. As I walked around, this is pretty much what I saw. I did see some of this. Can you, oh, I've got it covered up now. If you look at the Big Bang Theory poster, I did see some of these where you had your, this, this going on. So I did see some of the orbitals that were drawn more like that. Okay. We are going to go very much in depth about the uh, atomic structure and the different theories that have led up to our current structure. Okay. However, today, we just need a very basic understanding um, so that we can observe the movement of electrons in different energy levels. Okay, that's what we're actually going to be focusing on, are just the electrons today. And so, um, it was correct that the electrons are outside. And what's this little core, dense part in the middle? It's got its own name. What's this? Yeah, nucleus. Yeah, so this is the nucleus in the middle. And then, surrounding it, we have electrons. We're going to figure out how to know how many electrons we have and how many neutrons and do all those counts. But for today, just like most, as I walked around, even if you didn't have it labeled, most of you had your center and then you had something. It, it's going to be more like this, just kind of crazy because they're always in motion. Okay. Um, what do you think would be one of the easiest or most common ways to excite an electron. What I mean by excite is not give it its favorite food. I mean like how do you make it actually change an energy level? Heat. Perfect. If you'll notice, I have a flame already going in the back because we're going to be doing a flame test. So we're going to see what happens when we add heat and make it jump through um, those different levels. There's something else that we can do to excite electrons. And you see it a lot, especially in larger cities. But not even that. I'm, we've got it around us, too. Let me start, let me start setting something up to see if it starts to make you guys think of anything. Electricity. Very good. Jackson was looking at the plasma ball earlier, and he's like, well, I left that thing alone. It looks dangerous. It is. Okay. The purpose of this piece is to put electricity through something. So we're going to plug it up. And I have some tubes of gases right here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, another way, as I said, to energize electrons is to pass a current through them. What we have here should be nitrogen gas. Okay, these are old, but we should still get a response. Okay, so I'm going to pass the current through the nitrogen gas, and we will see what happens. Could someone be my light person, as in turning off the lights? And you can just stay in there, because I'll have you turn them on and off. Okay, can you see everybody? All right, you want to hit the light? <laughs> no, they're confusing. I know. I hate these lights. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, the, the, I know. Here, we need to do this. Here. I'm going to turn off the projector. Right? Sorry, Swivel. Okay, now let's see. Now I can't find the device anymore. Here we go. Yeah. All right, electricity is going through the nitrogen gas. Actually, this is neon. It got put in the wrong thing. So what happens, uh, what is our indicator, what are we seeing happening with the excited electrons? They're giving off light. Absolutely. Okay, lights please. So, uh, it's bad. Like, I accidentally, I didn't get a full contact with it, but I accidentally got a small amount of contact doing something with this two years ago, and it was, it was frightening. Sorry, people. Yeah, it, it was shocking. Um, but, you know, 
I, I, I think I was touching part of the metal a little bit, just enough to give me a nice scary jolt. I lived. That's why I don't want you guys to do it. All right, this one should be the nitrogen, actually. I think I had them in the wrong thing. Okay. Can y'all see that one? Is it like purple? Yeah. My favorite color. Purple. Oh, here it goes. It's going to the top now. You all see it? Spread a little bit. Okay, light. So what color was that one? The color of the, what was the color of the first one? Here. This is called a spectrum. And every element on the periodic table has a specific spectrum. And so we can actually use that spectrum to help identify um, unknowns. And so what you're going to do today is we're going to be trying to solve a mystery about some unknowns. But before we do that, there is still another way to excite electrons and get them into different energy levels. Um, what you're seeing really with the light given off is after they go to a higher energy level, they fall back down. They're constantly in motion and they're going up and down. And when they're falling back down is really when they're giving off the light. Okay, so they're excited, they're coming back down, they're excited, and they're giving off light. There is another way to cause electrons to move. Mechanical. Yeah, crushing. Has anybody ever, um, has anyone ever done the breath savers? Crunching. Okay, so I got enough breath savers for us to see, to see if we could... Uh, observe the electrons moving. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I know, it made me angry, but we've still got enough in the bag. So, um, let me unplug this. I'm going to come around. Everybody take one. Go on and unwrap it and just have it ready to go. No, you can just get and watch someone else eat it. If this is not, if you're going to be like, blah, you don't have to. We're just going to get with someone and we're going to crunch really, really hard in the dark and see if we can see the sparks. I don't know, I'm not a big fan of that. Do you want to put it to the audience? No, you don't like it. You'll get with someone so you see them crunching. Don't do this. Just let someone else do it for you. You can still eat it. Just don't crunch it. Okay? If you've got braces, be very careful. Um, so get with your person. Make sure that you've got a visual on them because when the lights go out, it's kind of hard to tell where they are. If you don't have a partner, take your phone and turn your camera on yourself and watch yourself crunch. Okay? Get ready, and we'll turn lights off. What What are we trying to observe at the subatomic level? The what? Which part of the atoms? The electrons. We want to see some electrons in motion. Okay, that's perfect. Just like that. Just like that. Don't break your braces. Everybody ready? Okay, lights are going off. Get ready to start crunching. 
Now crunch fast and hard and see if people can see your sparks. Oh, I see some. I see some right there in Alex. Alex did it. It doesn't work for me. It never does. No, I have a hard time with that. Switch and let or let your partner do it too. You didn't see any. I saw it from where I was standing. I can see her. I guess I should do it for the camera. Here, camera. I'll try it. I'll try it and see if the swivel catches it. All right. Here I go. No, I don't see anything. Did you see anything? I can't do it. It hurts my teeth. I haven't seen it on my camera either. My mouth is numb now. Okay. All right. I don't see anything on you now. No? Okay. Um, all right, Josh, you can turn the lights back on. I tried it on the camera. I didn't see anything. Now, I was looking around, and I happened to catch right when Alex must have been chomping his, and he looked like a little, a little green strobe light. Very fast, but it was in there. So, it does happen. Um, crushing the mint. Or crushing anything, it's creating an unequal division of the electrons, and when it does that, uh, the nitrogen atoms are what's being uh, reacting with the spearmint. Um, I will try to crush it behind you. It's just very difficult to actually hit the mint in the dark. No, I'm sorry. Okay. This way. This way. You can go the other way. There you go. Shake it. Okay. Hold on. The, the hard part is, is actually hitting in there. Oh, people, I'm going to scoot back because it might go in your eyeballs. Be careful for this little flying pieces, flying pieces of mint. But everybody kind of get your eyes right here. I hope not. Okay, Josh. Oh, this is. This is hard. Hold on, I'm just trying to get my bearing here. Oh, did you see it? It did it. Okay, turn the light on. I'll smash it again. Just stay where. Okay. If you would like to gather around, it worked. Did you see it? I did. Grab another mint on the way. Watch the swivel. Grab another mint. And Josh, you can uh, use your phone to find your way. I need a phone. Yeah, there we go. I don't have a phone. Oh. No, give me a minute. Okay. Gather around the campfire. We'll sing the campfire song. Oh, thank you. Some people know that. Okay. I'm going to give this a shot again. If you're close, again, please watch or be prepared for flying pieces of mint. Okay. There we go. You see it? Oh, yeah. Give me another mint. Almost everybody has seen it now. I'll crush some more. Pass me a mint. I, I think at least half of us have seen it now. It's really not that important. Except it's just crush them in the bag, you know. Oh, yeah, I could try that. Oh, it's already out. We are. We're ready. Okay, here we go. Oh, that was a good one. Wow, Y'all see that? Okay. Do it in one in the bag. Oh, Jackson wants one in a bag. Oh, here's one in the bag. All right, I don't know if it'll, if it'll get the, what we need here. But here we go. Oh, yeah. Did you see it? That was great. Look at it. It's still going. All right. The bag did work better. Yeah. Good, good thinking there. I like that. Very good. Smart picking. Okay. What are, before we move on, we, we've done some stuff. What are some real world applications that you can think of where we see this? We see the electrons giving off light, giving off their spectrum. Neon light. Fireworks. Fireworks. Did you say fireworks? Fire. Fire too. But especially fire works. 
What about, anybody got any more ideas? We've said fire, fireworks. The neon lights. Anybody have any of those fancy pine, pine cones? Well, yeah, light bulbs in the different colors. Anybody have those things that you put in your fireplace to make them burn all different colors? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Those pine cones or those fancy little things you put in a fireplace have been coated with different chemicals um, knowing that the different chemicals are going to give off different colors. So that's how those things work too. They've taken different salts with different ions in them to make those colors. So whether or not you knew it, you have seen this um, in your daily life quite a bit. Um, so what you need to do now, we're going to get ready for... Um, our mystery that we have to solve, okay? Who's interested in forensics in here? Anybody? Okay. So what has happened is Mason has been poisoned, okay? He's dead. And we have to try to figure out what killed him. Okay, so we've collected a bunch of stuff at the scene, and there's one particular um, powder that we found um, around Mason, like on his shirt. So we've got the powder back there with our items for our lab labeled unknown. Okay, you're going to be trying to decide what ion or what element is the unknown that killed him. What did I just now say about all the elements on the periodic table? Yes, they have their own unique spectrum. So you're going to take known chemicals that are sitting out. You'll notice um, in the back we have different containers, and in front of each container is some of the powder that, or the solution, if it's already in solution. So you're going to be testing those in a flame and recording your observations like this. Um, oh, I'm going to turn that on. Go on and write flame test lab at the top of your sheet. Or you could write who killed Mason. Or excuse me, what killed Mason, not who. What killed Mason? What killed Mason? What killed Mason? Put your name, today's date, too. Hmm? What? Okay. Your data table is just very, very simple. You're going to have your ion. Underneath ion, we have not learned really what they are yet, but that's just a charged atom. Because you will look on the jug, on the containers back there, and it might say um, copper sulfate. Okay, what happens when you put it in the flame is that the ion. Um, as it gives off electrons, the copper becomes an ion. It becomes ionized. And so you're actually seeing the ion as it becomes an ion and the electrons are moving about. So we're just really going to be focused on the first part of the chemical name that you see back there. So you're going to be looking at potassium. I'm going to put the symbol first and then the name of the ion. You're going to be looking at lithium. These are all your knowns. You'll be looking at calcium. You'll be looking at copper. Strontium. Oh. That's an SR. See you. 
That's an R. I, I don't know mine. It won't. There we go. That's an R. So I appreciate the power to break that right again. This pen and me don't get along very well. Yes, go on and put the little symbols on so you can start learning the more common ones. So, calcium, oh, let's see, potassium. I've left something out. Well, the unknown, but I've got one more time for that. Duh. Sodium chloride. What are we doing sodium? Most of these are chlorides. That means this ion has um, bonded with chlorine to make a salt. That's why they're in the powder or crystal form. Okay, so these are all of your knowns. Now you will have one more spot where you'll just write unknown. or poison, whatever. That's what you're trying to find out, the stuff that we found on Mason. So here's your ion. Over here, you're just going to record the color and any other observations you might see. Maybe it does something. Maybe it makes a noise. Maybe it gives off a little explosion of poop or spark or something. Safety. Before you start, make sure you have someone, one of your partners, to always be your flame watcher. Remember, these Bunsen burners are a little shady. Watch for blowouts at the bottom. If it blows out at the bottom, quickly just turn the gas off. Turn off the fuel source. Okay. Watch. If you have on loose clothing, like even if you have something like this on, take the outer layer off. Um, hair ties are back there. Uh, on our table, if you need a hair tie, keep your hair from catching on fire. Yeah. Um, goggles are a must when we're, when we're doing this. And your process for testing your knowns against your unknown is very simple. If I can get the swivel to follow me. <laughs> Sorry, Jackson. Okay. Come on. Okay, it did. So it's very simple. You're going to have uh, on this table are your cotton swabs. Very high tech. Very high tech. We're using Q-tips. Okay. Um, because we want to put these in a flame, what do you think we need to do with it first? What? Yes. Yeah. Remember Mason's money burning. We want to have some insulation so it doesn't just catch the cotton swab on fire. So you'll just get it wet. And um, you will then, like say, say potassium is our first one or whatever. You'll come over with your wet Q-tip and you'll find your whatever you're looking at, the potassium here. And just get some powder on it because you want to... Um, find out what all those look like, so then what are you going to do with your unknown to figure it out? Yeah, you're just going to match it. So you're getting all your knowns established so that when you get to your unknown, hopefully you'll have a good baseline to figure out, okay, I see that, that's going to be that. Um, and then you will have your flame, and you're just simply going to put your Q-tip in the flame and record whatever you see happening. Okay, so the colors that you saw, anything that you saw is what you're doing. So that's all. I'm not telling you. you got to do it yourself. So that's all you're doing. Make sure that your Q-tips are not so hot when you put them in the trash. Um, and other than that, just be careful not to contaminate or cross-contaminate any of the chemicals. Um, and don't set yourself on fire, please. Okay, glasses, burners are around. Watch the swivel in the middle, please. 
Oh my gosh. I was stretching out. I was stretching out. Yeah. Yes, you may. Gotta get my bottle too. Needed in the office for a moment. Are you good? Aww. Make sure glasses are on and I have a lighter. So light your flame. So what Yeah. Yeah, just all around the shadow. Yeah, wherever you want to grab one. Um, this Bunsen burner in the hood. Available for a group as well. It's already on. Do you want to use it? Yeah, in fact, one that's going, if there's not a big line, you could just take your swab over and stick it in there and write your. If you don't even want to light your own, you can use the one that's in the hood. In the hood. Uh, swabs are here, and then all the chemicals are here. I kept the swabs and the chemicals different. The unknown is right here. I need to it on purge. It doesn't matter as long as you put it in the same. Potassium is the first on your list, so potassium. This is calcium, um, and for it, it's just in a solution. You don't have to wet it. They're all sitting out. The lighter's going around. You can just go grab one from another section that nobody's using, or even move over there if you'd rather. Yes, yeah, the one I've got set up, if you want to get your little swab, walk over and put it in, that's fine. Yeah, you don't have to set up a separate one if you don't want to. As long as you get to observe what's going on. Okay. Oh, hey! Let me have your attention real quick. I meant to tell you about the Q-tips. Look at me. The Q-tips, sadly, have plastic stems instead of the paper stems. So as you're putting it in the flame, if you put it in there too long or too far, it'll melt. Okay, so let's not get melted plastic in the burners. Just make sure to keep only the tip in there. Sorry about that. I, I did not mean to buy plastic. Okay, it's going around. Who's got the lighter? Okay. Can you let Jackson use it real quick?
Make sure someone has always got eyes on the flame. Jackson, you don't have to have it on that. I know. There we go. See, you just kind of adjust those two and you get That's probably the best we'll be able to do. Ooh, nice. Nice. How are we doing? Everybody in motion now? Oh, yeah, there's some more of the little clickers in here. There's a lot of right there, too. This one's 
Council, make sure you put it right up next to the thing. Yeah. After we're done, then so when you're done, you'll just write a little sentence at the bottom that I think this chemical killed Mason because of this. Okay. So. What do you mean? It was I think we can say that it's okay. not that. Try. You think so? Try that.
I'll look for it. Like, uh, well, like red, orange. <laughs> orange, red. Okay, we've got lunch in three minutes. So, um, try to see if you can get the poison deduced before we go. Follow up with this tomorrow for you guys is after lunch. Another potassium again, and just double check it. You could double check the one you, the 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 one you think it is by the unknown, and just see. In fact, you could do them together. Let's see what they look like. You'd be all crazy. I will look for some cobalt for you for right after lunch. Jesse, would you mind to turn that flame off right behind you, honey? Uh, it's the blue knob all the way to the left. Check your sinks, make sure you got all your Q-tips out, and we will see. Success. There you go, that's a good way to do it. If you're not sure, you can always take your known and your unknown and just put them in there together like the girls are here to see what happens. So this is... When we get back. So, go and have a good lunch. I can make this stop.